Thank you so much for having me. So I'm going to uh, skip over some of the definitions just uh, to mention that when we talk about deep learning or machine learning, they are uh, a subset of AI methods and uh, radiomics to provide a brief definition is a high throughput quantification and feature extraction from radiological uh, images, which involves collection of uh, MRI scans, for example, uh, pre-processing, uh, tumor subregion segmentation, extraction of quantitative imaging features, and using um, machine learning or deep learning for um, predicting an endpoint of interest, which could be prognosis, for example, progression-free survival, uh, pre prediction of omics data, like genomics, response to treatment, tumor microenvironment, and so on. Uh, so AI can help in neuro-oncology workflow all the way uh, uh, during all steps. For example, it can help in acquisition, in AI, uh, in detection, characterization, uh, in pre-surgical planning and integration of different diagnostic methods for prognosis and treatment planning. And finally, in uh, uh, monitoring the response of the patients to the treatments. Uh, and when, uh, let's say in a clinical trial, an endpoint or uh, an outcome has reached, um, the AI can be optimized all through the process. There has been a vast body of research and developed tools in adult brain tumors, but even though uh, brain tumors are the deadliest form of childhood cancer, there's a dearth of AI studies. Uh, that's despite, we know that there will be tens of thousands of children with brain tumors diagnosed, and there's a large um, 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 heterogeneity across different tumor types and a heterogeneous response to the treatments. So it's very important to use AI to help in um, providing uh, diagnostics and prognostics for children. One solution would be to apply adult models uh, to pediatric um, scans. But as you can see from the images here, from uh, a three-month-old to one-year-old to five-year to 18-year-old, brain structure is constantly changing and developing and MRI signal intensity is also changing over the uh, developing brain. So it is not easy uh, or feasible to use uh, the adult models in pediatric uh, uh, patients. Another challenge would be in uh, subregion uh, identification, for example, for pediatric brain tumors, uh, based on RAPNO criteria, it's recommended to be able to differentiate enhancing tumor from non enhancing tumor from cystic core and edema for uh, assessment of treatment uh, response in pediatric cases, which is different from adult brain tumors. So we have to remember that children are not small adults, and uh, um, anything that has been designed for adults cannot necessarily be uh, and directly be used for children. Um, if you want to develop pediatric models from scratch, um, we will have uh, a challenge of uh, lack of data, which mainly comes from lower incidence of um, brain tumors in pediatric cases compared to adults, but also a lack of multi-center data, non-standardized imaging protocols across different centers and more heterogeneity across the patients, which may, makes it difficult to find a pattern uh, using uh, machine learning or deep learning methods. So what we did at our, uh, at our group was to use uh, the AI models that were developed on adult brain scans and uh, use transferred learning uh, to uh, adapt them to uh, pediatric uh, brain scans. Um, so, we developed models for brain extraction and tumor subregion segmentation using deep learning uh, in a cohort of multiparametric MRI scans uh, that were acquired on multiple scanners across multiple histologies and across multiple centers. Um, as you can see, the performance of brain tumor subregion segmentation uh, uh, shows a high dice score, which is a measure of uh, performance of the model. In the validation set, uh, and it was reproduced in the internal set, uh, test set, which is kept unseen during the model training, and on the external test set, which was acquired from centers other than CHOP. Uh, and these are two example cases uh, from internal and external test sets 
or with the performance of our method compared to expert segmentation, uh, which shows high performance of dice score in subregion segmentation. We also show agreement between Vasari features, which are uh, features that are commonly used in radiology practice for evaluation of the volume of uh, tumor subregions, for example, enhancing tumor, uh, non-enhancing tumor and cystic component. Uh, you can see um, the predicted model uh, and the manual segmentation agree very well and have a higher correlation. Uh, compared to a few other studies that have uh, proposed the tumor segmentation based on pediatric data, our uh, method seems to work uh, outperform them and it is segmenting uh, the subregions sub that are recommended by RAPNO. Uh, next to radiomic studies that are ongoing at our group, um, we have used uh, uh, pediatric brain MRI scans uh, and you, uh, base, uh, use machine learning and deep learning for predicting progression-free survival, um, omics data, and tumor microenvironment. So in pediatric low-grade gliomas, as you, can, uh, as you know that they are the most common brain tumors in children, um, Surgical resection usually um, carries the best or most favorable uh, outcome, but it is not always possible uh, in deep-seated or highly infiltrated uh, tumors. 10-year uh, overall survival in pe uh, pediatric low-grade gliomas is um, over 90%, but progression-free survival is something around 50%, which means that almost half of the patients are going to need adjuvant therapies, which also means that they will probably have cognitive decline and um, um, and morbidities. So if you have non-invasive methods that can uh, stratify the patients based on their pre predicted risk, probably we can come up with solutions or treatments that are tailored to the um, uh, situation of the patients. For example, for low risk group uh, patients, a conservative uh, course of treatment can be adopted for medium risk proactive for high-risk aggressive form of therapy. We developed uh, and trained uh, um, uh, machine learning models for prediction of progression-free survival and stratification of the patients into uh, different risk groups. Um, and also we show that uh, the risk groups that were predicted were also um, uh, correlated with the underlying uh, um, um, genomic markers, like for example, mutations in BRAF and uh, NF1 were more um, pr predominant in uh, high risk groups. Um, another study that we have carried out is on clustering of uh, uh, patients based on their imaging features and looking at their molecular underpinnings with the hypothesis that uh, biological processes derive uh, or drive the um, uh, imaging phenotypes. And we show that, uh, yes, in um, the three subtypes that we found, uh, mutations in different genes and key markers are different. Um, uh, another study, uh, we are uh, correlating or finding associations between uh, radiological uh, characteristics with immunological prof profiles of the patients. For example, tumor volume seems to be uh, correlated with composite stroma score. And a very new line of study that we have started is radiopathomics that uh, is uh, going to uh, combine pathomics and radiomics uh, uh, using computational methods for prediction of pro uh, prognosis in patients. Um, so I'm going to just summarize the slide, which is on lack of reproducible and generalizable uh, radiomic biomarkers, which comes from lack of data and uh, not being open to sharing methods. Um, so in conclusion, uh, um, there's a need for increasing data size uh, through consortia or collaboration, and there's a potential for computational tools for uh, treatment planning of the patients by providing upfront prediction of um, the tumor prognosis. I would like to thank all of uh, our team members uh, at the Translational Imaging Research Unit of D3B. And uh, 
the D3B leadership and everybody else. Thank you so much for your attention.